In this video, we will investigate a class of compounds called organic compounds. There are millions of known organic compounds, many of which occur in nature, and even more of which have been synthesized by chemists in the lab. All organic compounds have the element carbon as their backbone. Specifically, organic compounds are those containing carbon-hydrogen bonds and carbon-carbon bonds. These types of bonds are covalent bonds. Biological systems are constructed almost entirely from organic compounds, such as DNA, lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. Many synthetic materials, including most drugs, fuels, plastics, and food ingredients, also consist of organic compounds. Why are carbon-based compounds so special and why are there so many different organic compounds? The utility of organic compounds stems from the variety of bonds that carbon atoms can form. Unlike most elements in the periodic table, carbon atoms may form stable single, double or triple covalent bonds with other carbon atoms or with a range of other elements. Carbon, with its four valence electrons, needs four electrons to complete its outer shell of electrons, and so can form four bonds. More than any other element in its period of the periodic table. Thus, carbon atoms may form many different bonding arrangements. Let's briefly investigate how organic compounds come in a variety of bonding arrangements, using black to represent carbon atoms and white to represent hydrogen atoms. Organic molecules can be small, or many carbon atoms can bond in a row forming chains. They can be branched or even cyclic. And there are even cage-like organic structures, but we won't investigate those here. These structures are drawn with balls to represent atoms and lines or sticks to represent bonds. And these are called ball and stick models. Here is a ball and stick model of a more complex organic structure containing chains, ring structures, and even oxygen atoms, which are shown in red. This molecule is sucrose, or table sugar. The reactivity of an organic compound depends on the types of bonds it contains. Different bonds have different reactivities. Non-polar carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds tend to be unreactive, while polar bonds such as carbon-oxygen single bonds, carbon-oxygen double bonds, or even carbon-nitrogen and carbon-chlorine bonds can be broken or altered more easily. Organic compounds can be drawn in the same way as other compounds, representing atoms with chemical symbols and covalent bonds as single, double or triple lines. This type of drawing is called the full structural formula. Drawing all of the atoms and bonds is slow. Each carbon atom forms four bonds, and showing all of the bonds explicitly can make the formula cluttered and hard to interpret. It is also hard to show the shape of the molecule correctly. One way to represent the molecule more quickly is to leave out some or all of the bonds. Each carbon atom is listed in a sequence along with the atoms to which it is bonded, like this. This gives the condensed structural formula. In some cases, we may draw out the formula but represent some parts in condensed notation. For example, linear chains of CH2 groups can be written out without drawing each carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bond. These partially condensed structural formulas may be used for representing molecules with long chains containing a double or triple bond at some point in the chain. 
In the case of a branched molecule, we must first write out the structure of one chain. This is typically the longest chain, or the one with the most complex structure. For example, the chain containing multiple bonds, if there are any. And then we write the branch or side group attached to this. In the condensed formula, the structures of the side chains are shown in brackets at the correct points in the chain. Alternatively, the bonds between the main chain and side chains may be drawn explicitly in the partially condensed structural formula. Condensed structural formulas are faster to draw, but they can be difficult to understand if the molecule is large or highly branched. They contain no information about the shape of the molecule and the absence of explicit bonds makes it harder to indicate which bonds are broken or formed during chemical reactions. So using our previous example of an unbranched molecule, we can use a better approach and draw only the most important bonds. Carbon-hydrogen bonds are common and usually unreactive, so we can leave these out. It's also unnecessary to represent the carbon atoms explicitly. Carbon-carbon bonds are so common in organic compounds that we can just represent them as connected lines. This type of representation is called a skeletal structural formula. In a skeletal formula, the end of any line segment and any angle between two lines, without an element label, is assumed to be a carbon atom. Again, leaving the carbon symbols off, we get this skeletal structure. Each uncharged carbon atom must form four bonds. If fewer bonds are shown, the remainder are assumed to be carbon-hydrogen bonds. In the skeletal structure, we can deduce that since this carbon atom has one bond to another carbon, it must have three hydrogens. This carbon makes two bonds with other carbons so it must have two hydrogens. This carbon makes three bonds with other carbons, and so we know it has one hydrogen. And this carbon has a double bond to one other carbon atom, so it must have two hydrogens. Bonds to elements other than carbon and hydrogen are drawn explicitly. Again, the carbon atoms are represented as angles between the connected bonds or at the end of line segments but other elements are represented by chemical symbols as usual. Skeletal formulas show the shape and bond angles of the molecule more accurately. For example, the portion of a molecule with a carbon-carbon triple bond is linear. But if a carbon atom forms one double bond and two single bonds, the angle between the bonds is approximately 120 degrees. The skeletal formula should be drawn such that this angle is correct. Molecules may be shown as 3D models, either ball and stick models as we saw previously, or space filling models. These have the same pattern of bonds as the structural formula, but the bond angles and lengths are more accurately represented. It is important to be able to predict the bond angles around each atom in a molecule. It is also important to be able to convert the 3D model of a molecule to its structural formula. Another type of formula that chemists use is an empirical formula. The empirical formula only indicates the relative number of atoms of each element in the compound in their smallest ratio rather than the absolute numbers. A chemist will perform an elemental analysis of a compound where a small sample of a compound is taken. Then the mass of each element present in the sample of the compound is determined. And the masses are then converted to moles of each element present. Simplifying the relative moles of each element into the smallest ratio gives the number of atoms of each element in one unit of the compound. For example, 
If an analysis shows that for every one carbon atom, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, then the simplest formula with whole number subscripts is C1H2O1, which we can write as CH2O. This is the empirical formula of the compound. The compound could contain any multiple of the atoms shown in the empirical formula. The compounds CH2O, C2H4O2, or C6H12O6, for example, all share the same empirical formula and would produce the same elemental analysis results. The formula showing the actual number of atoms in the compound is called the molecular formula. If the compound was glucose, for example, then its molecular formula would be C6H12O6 because one glucose molecule contains six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. A functional group is an arrangement of bonds in an organic molecule that can undergo reactions. Functional groups give a molecule distinctive properties. All bonds, except carbon-carbon single bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds, may be referred to as functional groups. The class of a compound is determined based on the functional groups it contains. For example, a compound containing this functional group is an alcohol. The functional group itself usually has a name ending with the suffix "-ile". The name of the functional group is usually similar to the name of the class, but not always. For example, the alcohol functional group is called a hydroxyl group. Now let's have a look at a list of common functional groups which we need to be familiar with. The class of compounds called the alkenes contain the alkynyl functional group. Alkynes contain alkynyl groups. Alcohols have hydroxyl groups. Halogenoalkanes have a halogen atom. For example, chloroalkanes have a chlorine atom called a chlorofunctional group. The aldehydes contain this functional group called an aldehyde group. Ketones have a ketone group. The class called the carboxylic acids contain a carboxyl group. We find the alkoxy group in molecules belonging to the ether class of organic compounds. And esters contain ester groups. And amide compounds, amide groups. Lastly, we find the phenyl group in the class of molecules called aromatic compounds or benzene-derived compounds. It is important to be able to name these functional groups and their associated classes and commit them to memory. The simplest class of organic compounds has no functional group. This class is called the alkanes, and these molecules contain only carbon and hydrogen with no double or triple bonds. The smallest alkane, which is not shown here, has only one carbon atom. The portion of the alkane shown here shows how carbon and hydrogen atoms can add on forming larger molecules. The molecular formulas of organic compounds within the same class follow specific patterns. These patterns depend on the functional groups present or whether there are no functional groups, such as in the alkanes. Let's look at the pattern in the molecular formulas of the first four alkanes with one to four carbon atoms respectively. These compounds are different because they have a different number of carbon and hydrogen atoms. And so they have different molecular formulas. But because they are all alkanes, their molecular formulas can be expanded and then simplified to the same general formula, CnH2n plus 2. In fact, for any compound which is an acyclic alkane, that is, if it is a linear alkane molecule 
or a branched alkane molecule, its general formula will be CnH2n plus 2. So the general formula for a class of compounds may be determined by drawing examples of the molecules and examining the patterns of their molecular formulas. Not only that, but the molecular formula may be used to determine the class of the compound. Let's summarize what we have learnt. A hydrocarbon is a compound containing only carbon and hydrogen. The millions of organic compounds known arise from carbon's ability to form four bonds in a variety of conformations and with a variety of elements. A full structural formula shows every bond explicitly. A condensed structural formula shows atom arrangement but no bonds. A skeletal structural formula uses line segments to represent carbon-carbon bonds and gives information about bond angles. Finally, functional groups are specific arrangements of atoms, which give a molecule specific properties and chemical reactivity.